Oh, it's time. Time to get radical. Your discretion is advised. Welcome to Radical Comment of the Week for December 20th through December 26th, 2021. These are the very best comments from that time period. Starting out with the honorable mentions, we have 9EG, Red Stress 97, and Bell Star. The bronze medal comes to us from Art Bell. Ad cash is not a purity test since the ads don't direct content towards a topic versus another. Exploring certain viewer requests is the opposite of an ask of the viewer. You don't ask people to like and subscribe. People find ways to avoid ads and mid-roll ads, which you don't run. With Pat and S, I watch while not signed in, and no mid-rolls run. Even if you ran mid-rolls, it's a tiny contribution to ask of the viewer. Easy to walk away for a minute and return. Congrats on a bunch of your videos passing some good watch numbers. Basement League passed seven or 8,000, good to see. Uh, one, quartering. Just got the cough, by the way. And he said, thank God for the subscribe star members that I get days off and can still support myself. Yes, by begging seemingly. He did not push like bad, as he does whenever he covers anyone being punished or booted from the platform. Two, for inspiration. What happens when an e-beggar uses the courts to eliminate debts from 15 credit cards and no longer has a mortgage? He avoids the good news and keeps asking viewers for help. DSP got rid of his debt obligations, keeps more cash now, but he still presses as much. His slow and seduced pay piggies help us win against the detractors. As in pay me to win the culture war, quarterings move, enriching me, helping the channel we all win. Well, starting from reverse here, starting from reverse to to one here, okay, as far as DSP goes, uh, like I said before, there's never going to be a moment where there's a final win for an e beggar DSP might have these times where he's like, hey, we beat the courts. Hey, you know what? This happened. Hey, I eliminated some debt. The thing is, he's never going to say, you know, because I eliminated this debt, I'm going to need you pay piggies to just keep some of your money and pay me a little less. There will never be a moment to where he's telling people to pay less. That's across the board with a lot of YouTubers. It seems like even when they grow their channels, they never reach a point art to where they say, okay, listen, I'm where I need to be. Okay, I'm at, you know, two, three million subscribers. So I'm going to, you know, tell you all to stop donating as much. I mean, hell, even, uh, what's his name? Uh, Mr. Beast has a join, right? Why the hell does people like Mr. Beast have a join? One, the quartering, uh, let's see here. Thank God for subscribe star members. He gets days off and support himself. Well, when you're the quartering, pretty much every day is almost like a day off. Unless you believe that uploading six or seven, seven easy commentary uploads a day is work. That's not work. Jeremy is not working. All right? Talking and then uploading a thumbnail of Brie Larson... A clickbait thumbnail is not working. In no way, situation, or form is that working. Let's see here. Um, and going to the first thing you're talking about is ad cash. Uh, you said, good on me for not running mid rolls. Let's see here. You mentioned Pat the Nest Punk. Tiny contribution. Well, I mean, you know, none of that is a, a contribution. Like, no thing, nothing to do with an ad is a contribution. There's no money that goes out of your pocket when there's any ad that rolls, whether it be a mid-roll, uh, you know, a pre-roll or whatever. I choose to not do the mid-rolls because I just don't want that to get into way, the way of my commentaries. Like on this, there won't be a mid-roll. I don't like that getting in the way of commentary. I feel that, uh, you know, the regular system is fine. I just call it the regular system, which is, you know, the the skippable pre. And that way, people, if they don't, care or interested in what is being advertised you know let's say if it's a car mid-roll or something i'm not sure and you don't care much about the new nissan coming out then you have the option to hit skip and skip that and go on into the commentary sometimes there might be something that is being advertised that you're interested in and you want to hear about uh, maybe most cases not but you know there's always after five seconds there's that thing that comes up like i said before art i'm not sure which I mean, this was, I was going to say, this is maybe back on a comment left back on one of my uploads about, was it like maybe a couple weeks ago, I was talking about uh, ads 
something like that. But this was all the way back in December. Yeah, I need to rush through these and kind of catch up. Yeah. Um, you talked about also the basement league passed seven or eight thousand. Well, numbers are not really important. Like, I've tried to explain this to you, Art, and maybe it might take years to explain this to you. View numbers are not important on YouTube. Art, they should not be. People should be dedicated to the quality of their commentary, the quality of their uploads, the quality of whatever they're doing. The views are not important. So it's kind of frustrating when you bring up the views and you talk about like what, which ones of my uploads have the most views. It's almost like an insult. Not really an insult, but it's almost like you're pushing against what I'm stating right now, which is the God honest truth. Views have nothing to do with quality on a YouTube channel. Nothing whatsoever. Now, is it better if more people watch and upload? If it gets out there, is it better? Well, yeah, you can argue it's better. You know, but, like, I'm beyond views at this point. The time years ago to where I actually cared in the least about views is far past me. I This upload right now, it could get a hundred, a thousand, a million... Nothing, it wouldn't matter. It's the same exact upload. It's the same exact upload. Thank you, Art. The silver medal comes to us from the Winged Avenger. I'm glad you specified that Tom Brady is the supposed GOAT because I don't even think he's a top tenner. To me, a Super Bowl won the clean way is worth ten times a Super Bowl won by some sort of skullduggery. So even John Elway's lone Super Bowl victory is probably worth more than Brady's seven since the latter are cloaked in suspicion. We all know for a fact that in a championship match, Brady had the football illegally deflated to his personal liking. Now that's the time he got caught. Who knows how long that had been happening. In 2018, a player named Julian Edelman was suspended for using performance-enhancing drugs, and the spotlight turned to Edelman's nutrition, nutritionist Alex Guerrero. Of course, Guerrero was also Tom Brady's nutritionist. I have to suspect that Brady was taking PEDs too. I mean, his performance was certainly excellent. I don't know who the top quarterback of all time is, but Joe Montana won four Super Bowls, and for all my searching, I failed to find one person who had even a shred of suspicion about him. So I have to assume he won through hard work and dedication, and that to me is worth more than Tom Brady. Barry Bonds, Lance Armstrong, and Evander Holyfield put together. Well, interesting thing you bring up is the nutritionist being the same as Julian Edelman. And, you know, I can't specify that he took any performance-enhancing drugs. But for someone like that to be playing well into their 40s, I would think they might be getting some extra bonus help. But, you know, I have no proof of that. Here's what I do know. The time we live in now, when it comes to the NFL, is much different than the time of the 80s and 90s. Meaning that a lot more happening around the NFL seems incredibly suspicious, like the coincidences. The coincidences. Shrouded. There's a lot of things shrouded around Tom Brady. I mean, there's all the cheating scandals with the Patriots. There's deflate gate. And like you brought up, you know, that's the one time that he was caught deflating balls. Now you might say, that's not that big of a deal. The ball's being deflated, not that big of a deal. How about the tuck roll back in the Raiders game? How about the fact that right after 9-11, right after 9-11, here comes Tom Brady. Here comes Tom Brady, just out of nowhere. And then they miraculously win a Super Bowl. And then he goes on to win several Super Bowls after that. One Super Bowl, one Super Bowl even happened to be, I think it was the first time, first time it ever happened, he won a Super Bowl in his own backyard. And then, like I said, the next team, the year after that, won a Super Bowl. Just happened to win a Super Bowl in their backyard. Nowadays, there's too many coincidences with the NFL. There's way too many coincidences. Uh, I will say this. Tom Brady is an amazing thrower of the football. He is a great player. Nothing can take away the fact that he is mechanically a very sound, great player. But sometimes, you know, when you get a little bit of help, whether that's the coaches, whether that's the coaches, you know, somebody was joking the other day, uh, there was watching, well, not the other day, but, you know, uh, there was joking about some, some former games. And they said, you know what, if my quarterback got that protection, 
if my quarterback had a situation to where somebody laid a finger on him and they were called for something, then, hey, my team might get to the Super Bowl, too. That's why I just don't I question everything about the NFL now. It's what you say cloaked in suspicion. Yes, cloaked in suspicion. The whole NFL is cloaked in suspicion right now. It's not like it used to be. Thank you, Wayne Devinger. And the shiny, shiny gold medal comes to us from Blaze Panzer. Here's my thoughts on people improving their channels. One, get yourself a good mic and video editor. That costs money, everything else, well. Two, materials, props if you need them for your YouTube channel. Most gaming channels don't unless you count a capture card for recording console gameplay outside of using an emulator. Some science and arts channels do need to buy materials constantly, but not gaming channels. Review channels should only review things that they are passionate about. Not every little device, every coin bag corporation is going to give out to the shills. 3. Improve your video editing capabilities. Well, while you can pay for classes or subscriptions, you can find free tutorials on how to do this on the internet and YouTube. This ultimately only comes with practice, though. You can watch a million hours of tutorials, but if you never exercise what you learn, you'll fail. 4. Improve your speaking abilities. Again, this only comes with practice. 5. Get yourself out there. Again, you could pay someone to shout you out or something, I suppose, but it's better to overcome the algorithm on your own power than to rely on cheap advertising. 6. Persevere. If you quit just because your first YouTube vids only have a few or two, you'll never amount to anything. Case in point, only the channel owner can improve their YouTube channel and only on their own. Waving the large monthly tithes on Patreon isn't going to do anything but turn them into scummy little coin bags who care about nothing but money and hanging out with the other scummy coin bags. Sometimes far worse than they were. Talking about it, I like how you said that. Coin bags. Well, we, could, we could say D-bags, but coin bags, the scummy coin bags. The people, the e-baggers that will tell you that the only way that their channel will grow is cha-ching, cha-ching, give me money. Give me money to help my channel, to help grow my channel. I tell you what, Blaze Panzer, when it comes to something like quality commentary, no amount of money is going to help that. When it comes to editing skills, you know your subscribers can pay for the program for you, but nothing's going to help you edit. point I'm getting at is... Nothing is going to help your passion, your skills, your ability to entertain people. Number four, improve your abilities. This only comes with practice. Got to figure out why are you on YouTube. Got to sit down and ask yourself, why are you on YouTube? In the beginning, it's kind of simple. Blaze Panzer, I've come full circle. Full circle from five years ago, over five years ago, when I sit down and I said, you know what? I want to be a huge channel. I want to be a huge channel, and I, I just want to grow, and I want to grow, and I want to get the views, and I want to get the subscribers. I want to be a huge channel. But then what happens is you start getting numbers. You start getting views. You start getting subscribers. And then you have certain people that want this, and you have certain people that want that, certain people that want you to talk about this, certain people that want you to talk about that. You see that your uploads are getting shared. You grow, and you grow, and you grow. But personally, what happened with me was Blaze Panzer. I started growing too quick. I started growing too quick, and then I lost sight with the reasons I actually really ultimately want to be here. And it's to express myself. It's to have fun. It's to enjoy. It's just to enjoy the experience, you know? When people focus on the numbers, when they just keep focusing on the numbers, the joy, it gets lessened. At least for me, it does. And the weird thing is, like, in every other aspect of my life, I'm about numbers. I'm about increasing numbers. You know, when it comes to work, when it comes to flea marketing, that's sales, that's work. YouTube, for me, is just a kind of way to relax and get away from all that. But then you got people coming here telling you about your numbers. Hey, your numbers are going great. Hey, good job on the numbers. Can I just get away from the numbers for once? Can we just have YouTube channels, Blaze Panzer, that just focus on having fun and enjoying themselves and not being constantly reminded, well, your numbers are not doing that good. Oh, your numbers. Oh, your numbers. Fuck the numbers. 
Everyone have a great day. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you.